Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Nate Robert Aze, and I'm a designer and entrepreneur based out of the US. And on this channel, we talk about design, lifestyle, and inspiration. In this particular video, I'm gonna be talking about my solo trip to Kenya, the places I stayed, where I ate, the places I had fun. And I'm also gonna be giving you five things that I learned that changed my life when I went on the trip. So I've worked on this video for a very, very long time. So make sure to watch to the end. There's a lot of dense information in here. Let's take it. Let's take a drink of water before we get started. So full disclosure, Kenya was the first African country that I ever traveled to. I'm from Nigeria, so there was a lot of kickback about me going there instead of Nigeria first, especially since I hadn't been back to Nigeria in 24 years. But if you look at my last video, I talk about my travels to Nigeria and I hope you get a lot out of that, too. They're both amazing countries to go to. Whichever one you wanna pick first, they're both amazing. Also, let me know in the comments if you want me to make a comparison video about the two countries and compare and contrast and figure out some of the pros and cons to go into both of them. Let's talk about Kenya a little bit. So Kenya is a country in Africa. The capital is Nairobi. Some other main cities that you hear people talk about are Masai Mara, Mombasa, which people always talk about because I guess Chris Brown went there and he went to Diani Beach and Kasumu. The population is 53 million. So that's just about two times the size of Texas population. And the official languages are Swahili and English. The currency that they use over there is called the Kenyan shilling. And the area of geography is about 200,000 square miles. It's about the size of Texas. So out of all the places, why would I travel to Kenya and why would I travel there first? Well, first of all, it's because I had a project actually going on in Kenya. It's a huge project it's in a small rural town. I can't talk about it much because I'm still under an NDA, but I'll just tell you a few details. So the project, like I said, is in a small rural town and it's related to what I do, architecture and urban design. I kind of cold reached out to this big company, which everyone probably knows about, about a project that they're working on and you know they have an extension in Kenya. People kept telling me to like reach out to them. So I was like, forget it, I'll just do it. And they ended up responding and was like, yeah, like we'd love to work with you. So they ended up flying me out there. So basically I just used the rest of the trip as like a vacation. So that's how it worked out. So it's time to get your pens and pads out because I'm about to give some real game right here in terms of going to Kenya. In preparation, so first of all, you have to have a travel visa. You have to apply. Good thing they have an online portal that you apply to get your travel visa. And then once you apply, you put you upload all your documents, you know, your passport pictures, you know, all those different types of things. You have to have someone who is there write you a letter basically inviting you out to Kenya. So another thing you have to do is get your vaccines. Yes, you have to get your vaccines. I know a lot of people don't wanna get the shots. People are scared of shots, but you gotta get it. One of the main ones that you have to get is the typhoid vaccine. So also it's good to take like Tylenol, non-laxative, and also anti-diarrheal medicine. Huge, 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 huge. Cause your stomach will be turning. After you eat that meat and all that stuff, like, yeah, you make sure you have that. So last thing I would say, buy a luggage scale. You know, there's a lot that can happen um, with luggage and baggage and all that stuff. So just make sure you have your scale so that when it's, when that time comes, you can just weigh it quickly and just go on with your business. So let's talk about transportation. So for me, I didn't take public transportation in Kenya. I try not to in countries that I don't know about. I have friends who do um, and then nothing has happened to them. So yeah, they're doing okay. But for me personally, I like to get a driver. So that's exactly what I did. I got a driver. It's kind of interesting how it happened because I kind of just met the person, uh, which is not advisable, but hey, uh, I'm still alive. So, but the driver ended up being my tour guide as well, which was amazing because as she was taking me around places, she was kind of giving me a tour and telling me about places that I should go to. And that's how I learned about a lot of the stuff that I'm going to tell y'all about is through her. Shout out to her. Shout out to her. So I paid her about like $30 a day uh, base pay. And then I gave her gas money as well as some tips and stuff like that every now and again. So I'm gonna talk about like flights and all that stuff, transportation, but just to let y'all know, I took United, Lufthansa, and Kenyan Airways throughout the trip. So let me break all that down for you. So I took United from Indianapolis, where I was at at the time, to Chicago, from Chicago to Frankfurt, and then from Frankfurt to Nairobi through Lufthansa. When I got to Nairobi, I stayed downtown and I stayed in two hotels actually in two days. 
So the first hotel I stayed in, I paid for myself. It was actually the Best Western downtown Nairobi. And it was about, I think $100 a night, something like that. The next day I got there, I actually stayed in a hotel that was booked by the travel agency that I was working with. And I'm gonna tell y'all about that. And it was actually free because they booked it. It was part of like the, our whole package. But I believe it was like $55 or so at night if I would have paid for it. So the travel agency was actually a part of a package that I got to go to the safari, to stay in Masai Mara and stay in a camp that was included in that whole package. So from the After 40 Hotel, we actually drove to Masai Mara in like a van with like another family to go to the safari. And so it was about a six hour drive. It was kind of bumpy along the way, but there were some amazing views. We went to a place called Kikuyu where there was like, I mean, views that were like out of this world. And then from there, we got to Emian Luxury Camp. And that was, I would say, the highlight of my actual stays. So I believe like that whole package with the safari, with, you know, the hotel night, with the Emian, with food and everything like that was about $600. And so I stayed there for about three days and then I came back to Nairobi and I stayed in three different neighborhoods in Nairobi, which are three of the best. Parklands, Westlands, and Kilileshwa. So in each of those places, I stayed at an Airbnb and it was about $60 per night. So let's talk about the experiences. The first one was a safari in Masai Mara. That was, I mean, that was life-changing. In the morning at like 6 a.m., we would go out for what they call a game drive. And pretty much we would drive around and try to spot the different animals that we could. Because keep in mind, we're in their natural habitat as opposed to a zoo, we're there in our natural habitat. So it was really interesting to figure out what animals we could actually find out there. So in the safari, they have what they call the big five. And I was able to see all of the big five. You can only see them if you get lucky. So the big five are the lion, the leopard, leopard, the buffalo, the elephant, and the rhino. So I was able to see those five and it was, it was dope. It was really dope. And uh, obviously there's like a whole bunch of other animals that you can see. So another amazing thing that I went to was the markets. I mean, the markets were different than anywhere I've, I'd ever been to. The merchants were pretty nice. They were pretty fair on prices and the art and the crafts that they had there was amazing. Like, a lot of the jewelry that they had was so, so, so nice. And I would recommend that you go out there and buy some jewelry. Another thing that was different for me was the malls. Like the malls were like mega malls, pretty much all of them. They had all the stores that you would see in the US and a lot more, honestly. I went in Zara a few times. I love Zara. So I got some clothes that I had literally never seen here. Some shoes that I had literally never seen in the US. So they have like different buyers and stuff out there it's really dope a few of the malls that you could go to are westgate mall junction mall two rivers and the galleria and it's not it's not the same as the houston gallery or the dallas gallery if y'all thinking that another thing i did was a lot of like live events so one of them that i went to actually on my birthday was an alternate sound concert and i'm a huge fan of live music so it was amazing to see them in person it was like afro beats and it was super dope. Also, while I was there, there was like celebrities like all around me. I only paid like $40 to get in VIP, but literally like all type of celebrities sitting beside me in VIP. One of the things I would suggest is to look up concerts on Eventbrite because they're all on there. Eventbrite is a really good tool to use while in Kenya because most of the events that happen are usually uploaded to Eventbrite. And also a lot of the nice restaurants that I went to, they ended up having live music as a part of their experience. I also ended up going to like some networking events. I know I went to a marketing event for a company of a guy who I had met out there, but there was like drinks and like gifts. And I mean, it was amazing. It was on this nice rooftop. It was really cool. So in Kenya, I would say like a lot of the events that happen are very well put together, very organized, like super nice. That was one of my favorite parts about going to Kenya. So let's talk about some of the tourist spots. So the Giraffe Center, that's one place that I ended up going. I wanted to go to Giraffe Manor. I know you all have seen like the images and videos of people like feeding giraffes from like outside of their room and stuff like that. I would have paid a lot to do it, but they were booked out for like a year. So there was literally no way. So if you want to go to that, make sure you book it low key a year in, in advance, unless if they've changed something or built more. 
Also, after I went to the Giraffe Center, my mind was just like running. Like it was so inspiring to me. I don't know why. And I started like sketching and stuff like that. That's another thing about Kenya. You get so inspired by what you see because it's like amazing. Like everything is so dope. And I had a lot of time to think and be creative. Also, another place to go to is the Nairobi National Park. There's actually a safari within the city, which is super dope. And then lastly, Kenya has the second biggest slum in the world. It's called Kibera. And I actually drove past that, I didn't get to go in, but it was interesting to see that perspective. So that's a place that I would say, you know, definitely check out if you're up to the task. So let's talk about food. I know y'all like to eat, so. So first of all, the hotel food was banging. The breakfast was really, really good in Kenya. Like they know how to make breakfast. Like from the day I got there to the day I left, I had breakfast at every place I went to. They have this thing called chapati. It's like bread. It's like a like a pita type bread, and it was so good. Like I could eat it. Just I could just eat that alone, like without anything else. Also, their fruits were like different. The fruits were literally like so fresh. When I went to Kenya, the pineapples were so sweet. Like they didn't taste like U.S. pineapples. Like pineapples from the U.S. make you like it tasted like a whole different fruit. Also, disclaimer: make sure you're drinking clean water. Make sure you're always drinking water out of a water bottle. Don't drink tap water. So another place I went to is called CJ's. CJ's was amazing. The vibe was cool. The food was amazing. I had like some chicken, like kebab thing with rice and like plantain. It was it was phenomenal. And then I had a drink that was like a kale tonic or something. I don't know. It was fire. Hero Nairobi. That place was so dope. The vibe was amazing. I didn't have any food, but I did have a drink. And the presentation was on point. They also had a, like a rooftop vibe with amazing views and stuff like that. And then the resort food that I had when I went to Masai Mara to the Emian luxury camp was on point too. From what I understand, they were actually cooking the animals that they were like raising at the camp. And I could tell because that food was fresh. <laughs> the food was fresh, bro. Like the food was, you could tell. It was fresh. Another place is Pepper Tree, Kenya. I had these interesting like plantain chips with salsa. It was like, it was an interesting play on like American and African food at the same time. It's different. And also the drinks were really good. Like and really cool vibe, very airy, very light and stuff like that. Another place I went was Inti Japanese. I got like this little duck combo with like rice and like all that stuff. And it was really good actually. It was on like a top floor of a big hotel. This crazy thing is like the interiors in Kenya are different. Like they're really, really nice. Like people really know how to design interiors out there and create a vibe that's like memorable. I also went to this place called Social House Kenya. They had the live music going. They had like saxophone players with the Afro beats. I mean, it was awesome. And the food was phenomenal. I had a steak, some mashed potatoes, and you know, some like American type food. Lastly, I went to this place called The Legend, and it was in Karen. I had sort of like this beef barbecue and rice combo. It was solid. And then they have this beer that everybody drinks there called Tusker Beer. So I was like, you know, let me try it. I mean, it was it was cool. <laughs> but the beef did have my stomach hurting though. I'm not gonna lie to you. So I had to take the emodium right after. So let's talk about architecture. So while I was there, I actually went to go visit an architect that I just reached out to like cold turkey. And he was like, yeah, come through. And so I went to his office and he talked about how in the 90s, there was this like boom of like real estate from people taking money that they had laundered and putting it into real estate. And so there was a lot of infrastructure built at the time. But when the government started cracking down on that stuff, a lot of the building stopped. So when you get to Kenya, you'll see all these high rises and mid rises that are like completely abandoned. And then you'll see other buildings that have like covers like all around the It's like a sleeve around the whole building. Like imagine a 40 foot building, but with like a sleeve around it. It's interesting. But other than that, the architecture was dope. Like it had like a older historic side and then they had a more modern and upcoming futuristic side. And they, they were divided by a road called the Malaba Road. And basically you can see where the development started to move from one side of the city to the other and how traditional architecture is on this side and modern architecture is on this side. For me, I geeked over, it was dope. Also, I talked about the interiors and the interior design in Kenya, but also Kenya is a huge adopter of technology. That's one thing that was amazing. I believe it's because a lot of their imports are from Japan who 
are a lot further along when it comes to technology and how it integrates with architecture and interiors. So everywhere I went, I saw like face recognition technology. I saw fingerprint technology on door handles. I mean, even one of the places that I stayed in Westlands actually had the, the keypad for the door and then it had a fingerprint thing on the actual handle. It was one of the dopest things I'd ever seen. The bathroom was like state of the art, like it was really cool. It also had like this multi-use washer and dryer. I'd never seen one before. That's like a washer and a dryer in one, different. So here are the five lessons that I learned while I was in Kenya. So first of all, wealth is what you make of it. When I went to Masai Mara, I saw a whole different way of living. When I first got in, I saw these people with like blankets over them, carrying and, and pulling along sheep and cows and things of that nature and their children. And I thought to myself with my American mind, yo, these people are not doing well for themselves. Like they need a car, they need a house, nice house and all those things. But no, people in Masai Mara see wealth as something different. You have wealth in livestock, you have wealth in children, you have wealth in wives. So a guy my age, and I was 25 at the time, had three wives and seven kids, right? This man still thought he was poor. Just think about that. He said that his goal was to have seven wives by the age of 30. The second thing I learned, beauty is really in the eyes of the beholder. We see a lot of things as beautiful because they're not what we're used to. If you think of people who are living on the mountains and they see the mountains every single day, it's just the mountains to them. But for me, who comes from a place where it's a concrete jungle, I go and see mountains and it's the most amazing thing that I've ever seen. So the third thing I learned, Kenya really exposed me to the fact that eating healthy is not as normal as it is in the US than it is in other countries. If you think about all the stuff that we eat, most of it is processed. I mean, look at all the advertising that we have that comes to us. Most of it is for processed foods, fast foods, things of that nature. We can't just like walk outside and get some fresh fruits and vegetables. So it kind of shifted my perspective in terms of eating fresh foods and where I get them from. We do have things like farmer's markets, public gardens and things of that nature. And I think we should actually use those more so we can get fresh foods because it's healthy for us and we want to live a holistic, healthy lifestyle because it makes us happier as people. The fourth thing I learned was that international business is really, really achievable. And it's super interesting because you get to work through different time zones. When I was in Kenya, it was about seven hours of a time difference between Kenya and the US. And so whenever I would finish my work, people were sleeping in America. So I got to turn in my work and then when I woke up, I had comments. So then I would get it back and then, you know, we'd go back and forth like that. So it was really interesting. So the fifth thing I actually learned in Kenya was the hustle culture. Like people were not afraid to sell. That's one thing that I would definitely say. And it was annoying at first, but you kind of came to appreciate it. Like I respect the hustle. Like I respect the fact that you're willing to come out here and convince me about why I need your product or your service. And so I just respected the fact that people weren't afraid to do that because if they didn't, how would I know? So what are your takeaways from this video? I would love to interact with you all and dialogue with you about possibly traveling to Kenya if you're thinking about doing so soon, or I would love to talk to you about your travels to Kenya and what you realized on your trip. So feel free to share your thoughts in the comments and let's talk. Like I said before, lots of people go back to Africa, lots of people go on these trips, but a lot of the times we show the highlight reels. We show a lot of the fun times that we have and all those things, but we don't talk about some of the realizations and some of the things that change our lives and travel. So I think we should do that more. And if you want more of this type of content, go ahead and like, comment and subscribe to my channel and I'm gonna keep it coming. Once again, my name is Nate Robert Aze. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.